Okay. What's up, everybody? We had to get our camera together really quickly, but we are so excited for tonight. So first, we got to introduce ourselves. So I'm Sharnice. And I'm Byron. And we are the Mobile Home Elite Investors. So we are so hyped for tonight, not only because we're live, but because this is our first time going live on YouTube. So that's what makes the night very exciting. We're also live right now in our private Facebook group. So definitely shout out to our Facebook elite members group. Shout out to the family. Yes. Hey, April. <laughs> How you doing, April? How's it going? Hey, Lexi Lou, how's it going? Hope everybody is doing well. Yes. Yeah. So man, listen, we are super excited. Again, we got our Facebook group tuning in. First time, like Sharni said, first time on YouTube live. Um, I know some of you guys, if you haven't been following us, um, on Instagram, which is our largest platform, we wanted to kind of get it get in the mix of let's try YouTube, right? Mm -hmm. we, we know we put videos up and we just say we have to we want to engage with our YouTube audience. We want to grow a relationship with you guys as well. Um, and come hang out with us on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so man, shout out everybody saying hello. So let's go ahead and talk about tonight. So tonight we're really excited because not only are we talking about mobile home investing, but we're talking about specifically the California market when it comes to mobile home investing. Yes. So before we get started, we know we're going to be talking about the California market. We cannot wait to bring our guest on um, actually probably just in a few minutes. But we always want to see where are you guys checking in from? We're here in Chicago, and we know we got our girl April April Mack with us checking in from Chicago. But let's see what we have. So what we got here? I see we got Art from Fresno. What's going on, Art? Who else? What are we checking in from? What part of the country or where in the world are we checking in from? New Jersey. Nice. Love it. Nice. You got Jersey in the house. What my people are we checking in from? Who we got? Wow, we got ATL. What's up, Raven? How you doing, Queen? We got CC, Texas. What's going on? Who else we got? We got Gabe. We got ATL in the house. Oh, man. Dallas, Texas. I love it. I love it. We got AJ joining us. What's going on, AJ? How you doing, oh, Queen? Up, AJ? We got somebody from the South Side. Okay. Um, and then last but not least, we got LA. We got Shauna from LA. And then we got LA in the house. Yeah, so man, that's the markets we're gonna be talking about. So that makes it even more exciting. Thank you guys so much again for joining. Yes. So again, we are super excited. So here's the thing, real quick: if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, make sure you hit that red subscribe button because we got plenty of content. And if you haven't followed us on Instagram yet, I'm gonna leave our at and Instagram because again, we have so much great content. Um, on the Instagram platform. And guess what? We will be bringing it over to YouTube as well. And we hope you have been enjoying the YouTube content about you guys state. But again, we got somebody special we wanted to bring on, Helen from California. Listen, if you guys are ready to hear our first interview with someone who has been actually doing great work in California, um, been finding phenomenal deals, like Man. mind blowing. Yeah, numbers is crazy. <laughs> So with no further ado, we're going to bring on Josh. Get Josh in here. Hey, what's going on? What's, what's up, going Josh? On, How you Josh? feeling, man? What's happening? <laughs> man. Hey, I just want to thank you guys for having me. Um, you know, this is like, it's crazy because I've been following you guys for a little bit or for a while now, mm -hmm. even before I started, you know, with the course myself, but I've been following you guys for a while. And the first time I saw you, I think it was off of, um, I think Packy's, Packy had a live and then I was, I started yeah. following you guys and, you know, um, I just felt like you guys had good vibes and I just thought, man, I would probably vibe with them. <laughs> <laughs> and then like, give hey, some change later. We're right here. That's wild. <laughs> Love, man. Man, thank you for even joining us, man. Honestly, we're so proud of you, what you've been able to do um, in your market. We know California is one of those tough markets, right? We know, um, you know, we hear it all the time. Like, I cannot find homes less than 30,000. I can't find <laughs> homes less than this. And we understand it can, it can be a challenge, but 
you were able to overcome those challenges. So we definitely excited to get started um, and dive right in, man. Awesome. Yes. Yeah, so, we, so before we even get to the actual mobile home investing, Josh, tell us a little bit about yourself. What's your background? Are you working full time? Are you part time <laughs> now? Have you said to get the job? I'm going to do mobile home investing full time. Tell the people a little bit about yourself. All right. Well, before I do this, just let me know if I start rambling too much because <laughs> I, probably okay. could. I could probably easily do that. But um, I started off. I, I my first job was um, straight out of college. I was a teacher, so um, I taught for five years. I taught fifth grade, and then now I'm actually um, I'm actually an administrator of a startup high school that's going to open up next year. So I'll be the founding right. principal of a school. Wow. So uh, that's what I do full time. <laughs> yeah, thank you. That's what I do full time. I don't have plans of leaving next year or anything like that. Because <laughs> I do love my job. But um, so a little bit more background. Um, so as as teachers, uh, I say teachers. My wife is also a teacher, so we're both uh, teachers, and we just felt like you know we we had decent paying jobs. Like teachers don't get paid enough money. Um, in general, but you know, as teachers in California, we had decent paying jobs, and um, we just found that at the end of the month, we were always, you know, struggling—not struggling, but you know, it was, the budget was tight at the end of the month every month. And then I had seen some, like, I had seen some podcasts and things like that, and um, I heard this guy ask another person. He said, "You know, how long could you go without getting a paycheck?" And I was like. I can't go one month without getting a paycheck. <laughs> you know, if I go one month without getting a paycheck, we're in some trouble. You know? And then, um, of course, I have all this student loan debt, which is a totally different you know, subject that I could talk about forever. But <laughs> so I have a bunch of debt. Um, we actually just pay off my wife's debt, which is a win for us. Oh, but yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. 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 So I was yeah so i i just started thinking you know what can i do to you know to pay this off quicker um you know how can i how can i find a way to make more money um to put ourselves in a better position so i started youtubing i started googling like different things like how to pay off that faster and i started learning about passive income because i had never heard about it before then um so i started learning about passive income i um, everybody started talking about uh, rich dad, poor dad. So I jumped into the rich dad, poor dad thing. And I learned about that. And um, early 2019 is when I really started to study real estate. And I started learning a lot about it. Um, didn't have a lot of money, didn't have a lot of capital to, to get started with real estate. So when you don't have a lot of capital or money, then, you know, you have limited options. You still have things that you can do, but you have limited options. So I, I tried the wholesaling thing with traditional stick built homes and um, I just wasn't super consistent with it. I think I could have been um, successful, but I just, I, I just, it was grimy. And for me in my full-time job and where I was, I, it just wasn't where I put most of my focus in. So I kind of learned about different things. I learned about stocks, I learned about the trucking industry and I was, um, of course, learning a lot about real estate and I just hadn't done anything with real estate. I just learned for a long time. Um, and then oh, a year went by and I actually did do a project. I jumped in on a JV. I, I, uh, my friend, he had a project going on and I helped to, I helped to fund the rehab for it. Nice. But so I put in, I put in, and it's not money that I had. It, I had I had uh, leverage. I had credit, nice. so uh, <laughs> I leveraged my credit to help fund this rehab. And I put in fifteen thousand dollars, and I was supposed to get five thousand dollars back in three months. It ended up being an eight month project, and I got thirty five hundred dollars back. So it didn't go the way that it was supposed to go, but I still learned a lot in the process, and I didn't lose money. So it it was a win, but. It wasn't what I want, you know. It wasn't what I had hoped for. Of course, after learning all this stuff about real estate. So uh, about a year later, now uh, this is now the beginning of 2020. 
um, I'm wearing I'm wearing the T-shirt, but the a year. It's been a long time. Lakers Lakers win a championship. Time. Home yesterday. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's now the beginning of 2020, and Kobe died. And I don't want it to sound like corny or anything like that, but I like I really that really like rocked me, oh, and I started God. diving into like his whole mindset, you know, and um, you know all of his podcasts and all of his uh -huh. like the different videos of him speaking and just like trying to get into his mindset and how he became successful, and he was just relentless. Uh -huh. And I just thought to myself, I I have not shown that at all. Uh -huh. I, I, that's not me. So Josh, let me ask you something real quick because you just, oh, man, uh, at our level, you're gonna two things we're gonna we're gonna circle back on. But one thing I love, I want everybody to, when he mentioned he leveraged his credit, mm -hmm. leveraged his credit. Okay? <laughs> if anybody's on here, right? Anybody is on here, um, who would like to learn more about leveraging their credit to be able to invest? Go ahead and put it in the comments. Who would like to learn more about leveraging their credit? Okay, because that's something itself, and I feel like that's something that we can yeah. we have we have a face. I mean, sorry, Insta a YouTube video. So this is new mm -hmm. to me. We got a YouTube video. Where we talk about leveraging your credit cards, but leveraging your credit. And I see CC says me. Um, and one thing I want to tell you about real quick. I want to share this. Jason had a great thing. Oh, uh, Josh, when you talk about said teacher here. Great to see someone I can relate to having success. That's huge, right? Inspiration. The reason I wanted to show that, because you just talked about Kobe's mentality, how it shifted you, like his death, and you start diving into the Mamba mentality, right? Mm -hmm. And I know how it's going to tie along. I'm, I'm eager to hear once that happened and you start diving into men, to, to, to the, the mindset, what did that shift for you and your mobile home journey? Yeah, so I just I just realized that you know I've I've been doing it halfway, and that's why I haven't really seen success. So this was prior to me even wanting to do anything with mobile homes. I I had known about it because I was following you guys. Right. I was doing stocks. Um, I was actually driving. I I was driving Uber Eats to fund my, <laughs> my stock portfolio because I didn't want to use my salary to do that because. I got checkings and a savings, but um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, so what had happened was I I made the decision. I was thinking, what can I do right now? What do I have control over right now that's going to uh, make the greatest impact? So I thought, well, stocks. I'm going to keep doing that. Um, I keep seeing this ad about how you know the mobile home elite investors how they made like ten thousand dollars over the course of thirty <laughs> days or something like that. You know? I hadn't actually checked it out. I was like, let me go ahead and check it out. And I saw your story. I don't know if I got the numbers right. Ten thousand dollars in thirty days, right? Yeah. 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 So I I had watched it, and I was thinking to myself, you know, this is this is something that I think I can do. I probably won't make that much money, but if <laughs> I can put myself in a position to be in a better place, then that's all that matters. I just need to go get the win. So that's when I that's when I jumped into mobile home uh, investing. So Man, yeah. that is dope, bro. I love the story. You know, again, just. The biggest thing, you know, I, I, <clears throat> what I heard from it was, man, I, I can relate, you know, just having it, you getting paid, you know, on paper, you look at your salary, like, oh, I'm cool, right? <laughs> and then when you say you get the spending at the bills and stuff, you're like, okay, yeah. where's this money going, right? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. that kind of triggered you to say, okay, let me start diving into it. And what I love is you try different things, right? You try, listen, like you said, wholesale, you put some money in for the wholesale and you leverage your credit. You start looking and start doing stocks, right? You look into trucking, but you you end up going to something that end up working for you. So that's pretty, that's pretty dope that I, you know, I love about your story. Yeah. And I, I, you know, I, like I said, I love my job and, but at the end of the day, it's not going to be something that I can, I can pass on to. Uh, you know, children, which I don't have any kids right now, but you know, who knows, who knows what's going to happen in the future. But um, it's, it's not something that I can, I can pass on um, to people that come after me. So that's, that's really when I started to learn about when I was learning about investing, that's when I started to learn about finances and like generational wealth and things like that. And I, I started to, to grow in that aspect. And um, that's, that's what I'm working on right now. So. <laughs> 
Man, awesome, man. Thank you so much, Josh, for, Josh, for even sharing your story with us and your background. So like Byron talked about, you talked about leveraging your credit for that wholesale deal. So California, we know, is one of the highest markets in the country, and that's even for mobile home investing. So before we even jump into your first deal, we're going to get into the numbers and what that looked like. Was that the same scenario for mobile homes? Did you leverage your credit for your first deal? So, um, yes, <laughs> the answer is yes. Uh, mm -hmm. But when I did my first, the first time I leveraged my credit, uh, it wasn't a wholesale deal. It was uh, my friend, he had an actual rehab going on. Oh, yeah. oh, the I, rehab. I, I used my actual credit card to fund everything. I did a balance transfer. I caught the fees, wow. all that, all that stuff. But um later on this and this was about like you know this was almost a year later um i was able to obtain a line of credit a personal line of credit mm -hmm. and that's what i that's what i use for my very mobile home deal okay yeah. nice. okay nice nice so let's get into what all the people is waiting on let's talk about your first mobile home deal so just kind of walk us through what was that purchase price the lot rent if you did any rehab and then tell us what the end goal was did you flip it or did you do payments yeah so my overall goal right now is to build capital so i'm trying to flip i'm trying to flip homes right now okay. nice. uh, so the first deal I had found on Marketplace, actually, that's a lie. I I found another home on Marketplace and it was a two bedroom, one bath, single wide. The owner was asking for, I think, $20,000. Um, I think at the time it might've been worth, you know, 25, 27, something like something like that. It was going to be a super slim deal. So I was reaching out to them. It was, an, it was a 55 and over park. And I was reaching out to them, um, just asking about like the details. And then the woman that was selling the home, she was selling it for her dad. And then she asked me, she said, are you buying this? Are you trying to buy this for you or for your parents or like what? So I, I told her what I was trying to do. And then she said, you know, I'm sorry, you can't buy here. It's a 55 and over park. And then you know, me, I'm like, well, you know, how about we just go ahead and we can continue our conversation. I'll reach out to your park manager and if they're cool with it, then we can move forward. And if not, then, then that's fine. So, and that's what we did. So I reached out to the park manager and I was just getting details about it. And she ended up being super cool. And she had told me, well, after, after spending some time talking with her, she, she had told me, well, you know, I get that you're interested in this, this deal here, but I actually managed two parks and at this other park, we're going to have a, she called it um, an auction. It's actually a warehouseman's lien uh, mm -hmm. sale, but she said, we're going to have an auction for this other mobile home. And I haven't really marketed it or anything like that. I doubt that many people are going to be there. So if you want to go to that, it's a double wide, it's two bedrooms, two baths. Uh, you're probably going to get a better bang for your buck there. And I said, yep, thank you. <laughs> it just happened to be the very next week and i asked her how often do you do this and then she said the last time i did this was about a year ago the last time i had this type of sale was a year ago so i just it just happened to be the right time right place i just i'm glad of that i reached out to that that first uh the first seller even though that deal if it would have worked out for me would not have you know been that great of a deal but um i wouldn't have found that park manager so anyways i I, I know I, I told you I, I might ramble, but anyways, um, I did go to a, yeah, I went to the auction. Um, I was the only one there. The oh, other, wow. the only other person was a neighbor and they just wanted to see what was going on. Um, <laughs> oh, wow. I, yeah, it was a double wide, two bedroom, two bath. I bought it for $8,100. Wow. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, 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 hold on. So your first home you went to go see cost twenty thousand dollars and you said it was very slim margin and 55 plus you get to this auction right you get to the auction now first of all what i love about it you you were able to how real quick how did you approach the park manager right how did you even how was that initial conversation with the park manager because most park managers don't really just give you opportunities like that how did that conversation mm -hmm. go mm -hmm. well uh I, first of all, was just trying to be as respectful as possible, but I told her, look, I know that this is a 55 and over park 
this is not a home that I want to purchase for myself. Um, what I want to do is I want to purchase the home and I want to clean it up and I want to help you and um, we can help each other. But basically, I, I won't move the home or anything like that. But I basically just want to purchase it, clean it up and then resell to someone that will qualify to live in your park and ensure that they won't try and move it out of here as well. So then she had kind of talked to me about some previous investors that she had worked with. Some were good, some were bad experiences. Um, but we talked for probably about half an hour or so. And then towards the end of it, she had told me about this opportunity. Nice. Nice. So what I love about that is because that's one of the biggest fears for everyone that's watching right now that we get all the time is how to have that initial conversation with the park manager. And Josh, how you just described it was so easy peasy. Like it was something like if you're watching it right now, of course, it's going to be, you know, on our YouTube page. You want to rewind that part because that's exactly how you want to approach the park manager. You want to be respectful. You want to ensure them that you are there to not move the home, but you want to create a working relationship. So that way you guys can bring value to each other. And that's the end goal. Yeah. yeah, Josh. What what city is uh what city is the uh the home located in California? It's in Fresno. Fresno. Okay. Wow. No, that's not Great. Art. I thought. I think it was Art H. He said he was in Fresno. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. Yep. Art H. He said. Hey, here, here's something funny. I want to show you what uh what, what Art said. He said, "I tried to buy that mobile home, but you beat me to it." <laughs> 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 All right. And then, that auction though. <laughs> and then Josh, yeah, was, how much was the home again? It was eighty one hundred. Look at that, eighty one hundred dollars, man. You got so many. I mean, once you said that, you were, we were seeing things. Let me see. Derek said, "Nice, uh, man." Look, Stevie showed you the the, the money signs. <laughs> Lexi said, "That's awesome, man." I mean, literally, like. Wow, like I mean, you're blowing people's mind with just again eighty one hundred dollars in California. Mm -hmm. Like well, when he first, when Josh, when you first told us, we was mind blown. Like, wait, Man, what? He was like, wow. I'm <laughs> like, see, I knew it. I knew it. He just got. <laughs> we were so excited for you. Yeah, thank you, and I appreciate that. And you guys, you know, the support from you guys in the course in the group and has been crazy, but. Uh, one thing that I did want to say about California, though, is generally speaking, it is going to be it is going to be a more expensive market than other places. And that's that's a it's a bad thing in one sense, but it's also a good thing in another, because if you take someone that lives in California and if you're able to complete, you know, if you're able to complete a certain amount of deals over the course of time, you're going to get to one hundred thousand dollars quicker than somebody that's in a different place that can sell for like ten thousand dollars so if you're able to make it work then i mean it's you know it's give and take so that's that's the good part about living in california the bad part is that it is going to be generally more expensive yes yes no you are speaking straight facts so let's jump back into the deal so we know the purchase price was 8100 so now let's talk about the rehab and lot rent and all of that yeah uh, my bad um, the lot rent was 600 bucks and that included everything that included utilities, um, which is pretty normal in this area. Um, and the rehab, I, I finished up at about $19,000. Um, mm -hmm. so I mean a total of 19,000. So the rehab was, uh, 11 and some change. Actually the rehab was less than that, but the home had back taxes. And at the time I didn't know to to check back taxes yeah. or anything. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the home had some back taxes. So, awesome. yeah. Awesome, awesome, man. So 600, wow, which is, isn't bad. Cause yeah, I mean like- bad for California market. Yeah, so I, so that's what I love about it. You know, like you said, you, you went into it with the mindset of flipping, right? And you talked about the rehab and things. I want you to talk about, one thing we talked about earlier about the relationships right, with the park manager and things, but what were some things that when it came to the deal that you didn't expect and that kind of just came out the blue, like, hey, okay, what is this? I got I got to weather this storm. Mm -hmm. Well, it was sight unseen. Well, it wasn't sight unseen. I didn't get to see the inside. I saw the outside. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and it looked nice from the outside. Mm -hmm. 
Um, something I wasn't expecting was the back taxes. Like I said, I did not know to check that ahead of time. Um, and then we had some plumbing issues too. Some of it I had to take care of and some of it the park had to take care of. And actually the plumbing underneath the house was like so bad that uh, it, luckily for me, there was a there was a huge leak and it was coming from underneath the ground. So luckily for me, it was coming from underneath the ground because that meant that the park had to take care of it. They had to shut off the water for the whole entire park because of this guy right here. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so that's 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 some of the things I, I think I didn't completely understand how to do my due diligence, um, even though I couldn't I I couldn't have technically done it anyways, because it, she wasn't going to let me inside the house. But that's just not, that's just something I wasn't expecting ahead of time. Nice, nice, man. Definitely appreciate you, you know, sharing with that. So I had a question real quick. I know we're going to do Q&A, but a question for you. I think this is pretty, pretty good. Ask, how long did your rehab take? Yeah, so the rehab was actually pretty, pretty quick. It was two and a half weeks, two weeks. Wow. Two and a half, two and a half weeks. Yeah, but the, the longest part was finding the seller or sorry, finding um, so I had actually wrote it down because I knew I would forget, but I bought it. I bought the home. If you just allow me one sec to get my notes, bought it on May 15th and sold it July 30th. So I, it took, it took a little bit of time to find the buyer, um, because people heard the lot rent and they weren't trying to pay $600 for lot rent. So it took a while. And what did you end up selling it for? What was I that? sold it, sold it for 40,000. 40,000 cash. And I know, yeah, I sold it for 40 and I know I could have got more if I was willing to wait. Um, but you know, for my very first deal, I was like, let me just go ahead and put it at 40, get my first deal done, move on to the next. And that's what I ended up doing. But y'all wow. heard that. Say, Josh, <laughs> hold on. Let's, 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 we go. Cause we, so we want to get everybody a division, right? So we purchased the home at $8,100, right? It took two weeks. Right, it took two weeks. So, what were what were you all in after after everything? What were you all in? Nineteen thousand. Nineteen thousand dollars. So you're in nineteen thousand dollars, and you sold it for forty thousand, right? Yep. So, that is a whopping twenty one thousand dollar profit. Twenty one thousand dollar <laughs> profit, guys. <laughs> I, I, when I tell you, I'm like when you when, like when you first posted it, it was just like, okay, the first the first while was he bought a house for eighty one hundred dollars in California. That was the first while. Wait, hold on, not to cut you off. I just thought about it too. That was July thirtieth of this year too, right, Josh? Yeah, that was a couple months ago. Forty thousand during a pandemic that everyone says that nobody has money. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, Gabe. You're right. Well, listen, you just saw my face. Well, as soon as you, as soon as you, <laughs> that was the same face that I had. I'm when, over here putting it all together too. Like, wait, did he just say forty thousand? He got forty thousand dollars cash during the pandemic when everyone says that nobody has money like that to purchase and buy houses. Yeah, man, that's that. amazing. I mean, look at the love. I mean, again, what? Like, even AJ had to put the question mark behind it. Like, <laughs> hey, like. I mean, hey, AJ has actually helped quite a bit too. I I messaged her on Instagram, and um, she's helped out quite a bit. Oh, AJ is amazing. Oh, AJ, man, amazing. we love AJ. I mean, again, congrats. Look, Lexi said, "Give me that." <laughs> <laughs> I love it, right, Derek? Again, that's crazy. Forty k, you double yeah. like, again. You doubled your money. Twenty one k. Look at Stevie recession proof and you did this in the midst of a pandemic yeah <laughs> <laughs> I, right? did. I mean yeah, seriously I like hey how about real quick aj said let me get my <laughs> 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 it's, it's put away right now it's it's working it's working on something else <laughs> so man i mean again like the numbers is crazy what i love about i tell people in california i said listen you know, because they hear they hear about our deals. We, you know, we paying five thousand dollars for houses or less, and they're like, "Well, I can't find that." But the rewards that you get, if I, if I buy a five thousand dollar house, I may make on a good day I can make ten grand, right? But I still make eight eight grand or so, five mm -hmm. grand. 
you made $19,000 by investing, right? You doubled your money. When we talk about, when you talk about ROI and we look at the traditional real estate, we look at even, I mean, many things, right? The only type of, the only, really when you can get returns like that is kind of like in stock options, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> yeah. Anything else, you tell me, if you yeah. come to me and say, hey man, I got a 30%, that's like amazing. But you doubled your money. So, I mean, honestly, man, that, that is that is amazing, man. Again, salute to you. I know you, everybody is showing you love, but that yeah, is crazy, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So something else somebody uh, mentioned earlier, but we got so many congratulations because of the amazing um, return that you got. But yeah, click that one. But. So Lexi, we got you. So it says, how can you check back taxes from an auction sale? So uh, for for me, you can if you're in California, you can call the HCD. I don't know what um, what the HCD equivalent is for other states. Uh, it might be the DMV or mm -hmm. something rather, but you can go there. They'll tell you where to go from there. But for my county, it's the county tax assessor's office, and they'll want to know. Um, They'll want to know why am I blanking on the number, the decal. They'll want to know know your decal numbers, and mm -hmm. then they can tell you whether it's up to date or not. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. And that's the same thing for most states. It's going to be um, your county clerk. So if you go to your county clerk, um, they can let you know if it's any back taxes on the house. Um, in your situation, Josh, like you said, you actually purchased it through the auction. So mm -hmm. A little bit different, but for everybody yeah. else, when you are purchasing a home directly from an actual individual seller, they should be responsible for those back taxes, unless you kind of work that into your purchase price. But initially, they will be the ones to pay the back taxes through the county clerk um, office before you go ahead and get the title transfer. Yes. Now, this question, Josh, I'm pretty sure you can you know the answer to this one. <laughs> How did you figure out the paperwork you need to get the house? How did you figure that out? <laughs> I figured it out through the course. Um, yeah, Byron and Sharnice told me what to do. <laughs> <laughs> the entire video, I'm gonna drop the link in here as well pretty soon. Cause you know, you know, every time we get, we got, you know, we have them stuff. You know what I'm saying? We, we gonna hook them up. We gotta hook the people up. Yes. So. Let's get back to it. So the one thing I do want to talk about, Josh, while we have you on here is that dealer's license. So we know that California is what we call a zero state. <laughs> technically, that means that you can't technically buy or sell any mobile homes. Right. You got to do this right <laughs> in the state of California. So. The question for you would be, have you got your dealer's license? Is that something that's even on your radar right now um, since you are still in like the beginning phases of mobile home investing? Um, I don't know if anybody from the HCD is here right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't know. Let's see. Anybody? But I don't, I don't have it. Not yet. Uh, but it's something that I would like to get in the future, but I don't have it right now. Cool, cool, cool. No, I'm and that's um, that's beautiful because one thing that Byron and I we really, really stress when it comes to the dealer's license is that it's very important. If this is something that you see yourself doing full time, you feel like, oh, I'm going to be doing mobile home investing for the next ten plus years. Like this is where I see my life at. If mobile home investing is something that you see on the internet and you're like, hey, that seems cool. Maybe I should invest in a home or two. Then honestly, a dealer's license should not be on your radar right now because you know that's something that you don't even see yourself doing for the future. So for us, we always say like Josh, Josh went ahead, he did his first deal. I know you have you know other deals that you're working on right now. We always say do a few deals, get your feet wet, actually put yourself in the field and make sure this is something that you honestly see yourself doing for the first time. Because for a lot of us, it sounds good. But then once we get in the field and you know you see that you have to be very consistent, you have to be consistent with your buyers, you have to be very patient 
with the rehab process. You have to be very patient with your buyers as well. And, you know, that's something that you're like, you know, I thought this was going to be something different, but now since I'm in it, you know, maybe I'll do another deal, but I don't know if there's something I want to do long term, then, you know, you shouldn't be getting that dealer's license. So, you know, that's something that, you know, Josh, that we're like, good. It's good that you haven't got it yet. <laughs> yeah. and, and yeah. one, Josh, we got, let me see, we have, we have 50 people or something. We got 49 people drop because I'm just going to give them a gym. So it's cool. So the Facebook group, but one thing I want to tell you guys is this is a hack for dealer's license and write this down. I always got to give you guys some type of value. So in the case of when you get, a, if you're starting out and you purchase a mobile home, you purchase a mobile home, what happens is when it's when it's considered a sale is when you get the title transfer in your name, right? So if you purchase a home and you do the title transfer and the, tra and the title goes into your name, when you sell that mobile home, right? You know, I'm, I'm gonna give you guys a hack on it. When you sell the mobile home, once that, if you have a bill of sale, and whatever price that you put on the bill of sale, right? If the if the title transfer in your name, that is going to constitute as a sale. Now, the good thing most states don't police it. So, again, this is one way a workaround around it. When you get the title, if you're going to flip the home, you hold on until you hold on to the title until it's time to sell. The original seller. As long as they signed off, now you can have that title and, and, and have your buyer, they'll get the title transfer straight to them. That way your name is not on the actual title. Now, again, the reason why I say this, <laughs> I, 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 I'm not going to tell you I encourage you, but this is just another workaround, okay? Also, another workaround is if you have a bill of sale, you can have a, an additional bill of sale. You can put the price $0.00 on the bill of sale that you guys are going to take to the DMV as if you gave the title away, right? Now you guys, so now that is not cons constituted as a sale. You just transfer ownership over. So I hope you guys caught that, okay? So again, it's just a minor workaround, but if this is something that you want to do full time, make sure you get your, you know, you want, if, if you want to you get your dealer's license. I actually didn't know about that second strategy at all. <laughs> So yeah, I may or may not be implementing that first strategy at the moment on a current deal. May or may not, but I didn't know about that second one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, that's what we love about, you know, just investing in general. You know, when it comes to like um like the dealer's license and anything like that, it's always a workaround for everything. It's a workaround for every single thing that you're trying to do you just have to be creative and that's something that we made sure that we did in the beginning to really learn the work around so that we're not really you know getting too caught up in things like a dealer's license in our beginning journey yeah and again there's no one really policing it now when you get to 10 homes 20 <laughs> homes and now yeah you're gonna get on somebody's radar but again right. one home two home um, you know, again, we always tell you, we want you to do your due diligence, keep the conversation up. You guys know in the course we have where you can call um, and get more information about that. But at the end of the day, you know, we just we want you to definitely get busy. And if you wholesale, again, your, your name not going to be on the title. So yeah, tell people <laughs> that all the time. Yes. And I think it says somebody uh, more says it's being recorded. Uh, I think so. I think it should. This is our first YouTube live. So we learned it along right with you guys. So we hopefully once it ends, it will go up on the page and this will be a permanent video. And uh, Willie, yes, we're we going we gonna to get y'all some action in New Jersey. We had a queen <laughs> that did flip a home in New Jersey. She purchased for fifteen hundred. I think she put two into it. She ended up selling for seven two thousand, you know, like two thousand dollar profit. But still profit is profit. Yeah, that's right. Yes. So. So what's your end goal, Josh? Like, where do you see yourself with mobile home investing? I know right now you said you want to build capital, so you're really focused on flipping. But it sounds like I know that you are working on a current deal, but it does sound like that this is something that you want to pursue, you know, long term. So what does those end goals look like for you? Yeah, um, I think my first goal is to be able to pay off my debt. Um, my second goal would be financial freedom. 
as in I'm going to keep working my job, but I don't have to depend on my job to pay my bills. And then um, my ultimate end goal, I'm, I'm not totally sure yet, actually. Um, I'm actually not totally sure. And I, I need to spend time thinking about it. Um, I I might want to just can I might want to build up kind of like what you guys have done and you know how you guys have purchased the park and I, I might want to be able to build up to that. Um, but I I I think right now I'll just say financial independence. That's my end goal. I love it. I love it. And what I love about it is that you can come watch this video like next year and then see if you hit some <laughs> of those goals that you said right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, I love it. So what would you tell, we have a, well, we have 51 people on here. We probably got some new people who are brand new to mobile home investing. What's some advice you would give someone starting out in the journey? Um, if you're like me at all and you were a serial learner, I would say that it, you just have to jump into it. Uh, so don't overanalyze. And when you have the opportunity, also don't over offer either. Um, because if they're actually a motivated seller, who is who you need to be speaking to motivated sellers, um, then they're going to work with you. So uh, don't spend time or don't over analyze and just jump in and you'll figure the rest out as you go. Nice. Love it, man. That, that is great sound advice, right? You know, the beautiful thing what I heard about take action. Take action that's the biggest thing and and one thing i want to leave you know not leave but one thing i want to tell people when it comes to action one way to really help you is what happens is when we think of something we think of almost from a to z start to finish we have all that in our head if you take those steps but you you take that but you create steps so what's my first mm -hmm. step okay what's step two step three step four step what that does is it min it minimizes what you have in your head and now you know okay i can't go to step x because i still haven't did step l right and a lot of times we get past that we ask them those questions at the end goal versus doing what we're supposed to do at the beginning so if you really start to like whenever you have something in front of you again look at the steps what does it take you can write it down what are you and then let that be your guide and be the blueprint to help you finish to the finish line that's right. I, at work, we call it uh, beginning with the end in mind. Awesome. Awesome, yeah. man. I love yeah. it. Man. Awesome. So any current deals you're working on? Yeah, I'm, I'm working on a deal right now. Um, actually, it should be finished up within the next couple of days. Uh, hopefully tomorrow, if not tomorrow, Wednesday. That's awesome. <laughs> Are you working? Working for the last quarter. Yeah, it's my second. It's my second deal. Um, but... Yeah, I don't know how much time you you know you want to spend on it. I could talk about it, or we could. I don't know. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, sure. Let them let them know. Let them know. Yeah. What was that purchase price for your second deal? Who want to hear about Josh's deal? Go ahead and put in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, I got it for seventy five hundred dollars. It's a two. <laughs> <Please. laughs> oh my god, that sounded like our numbers now. Like <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. It's a two bedroom, one bath, a uh, single wide. Okay. Single wide home. So it's a bit smaller. Yeah, but we should be finishing up here pretty soon, the next couple of days. I'll be posting about it on Instagram at the mobile home guys. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Yes, I love it, man. I love it, man. That's, and again, $7,500 in Now, what city is this also in Fresno? It's also in Fresno. I was afraid, no. Okay. Yeah. Are you working oh, with the same park? Oh, what was that? I said, are you working like are you working with the same one park now? This is actually a different, this is a different park. And I could see myself working with this park um uh, for a little bit here for a while. Um <clears throat> but yeah, so this one, this deal actually came from a bandit sign. Um somebody had seen my sign that was parked or uh, posted directly across the street from the park. And he decided to call me and that's that's how I got it. Yeah. But one thing I did want to say that I, I forgot to say earlier is I know that California is generally uh, more of a, an expensive market. But within California, there are lots of different pockets that are pretty 
affordable. So like your San Diego's, your LA's, your Bay areas, they're going to be expensive and that's just what mm -hmm. it is. That's just what it is. But around each one of those areas are other areas that are more um, affordable if you're willing to drive. So yeah, if you're willing to drive or JV with people that might be in a more affordable market. Mm. Two, you just hit two, two gems. Yeah, right, it's been facts, Josh. <laughs> what if you're willing to drive, we're not talking driving to the suburbs. <laughs> right. We're talking about are you willing to drive, right? How many miles would you say, Josh? Um, well, I'll say hours. Um, in my market, in my market, I my what I consider my market is. Um, an hour and a half each direction of me. So like Bakersfield up to Modesto, that's my market. Wow. wow. That's yeah. amazing. And that's the same thing for us. We're, I mean, Chicago is not as high as, you know, the LA market, those higher markets, but it's still a very high market compared to, you know, it's one of the major cities in the U.S. So same thing for us. We have to drive out. When we first started, we were driving like five, six hours sometimes going to, you know, other states just mm -hmm. trying to see if it was other deals in that market that made sense for our budget at the time. Yeah. No, yeah, that's, absolutely. That's amazing. So, Josh, what is one thing out of this journey that you will say, you know what? Nope, I'm not doing that no more. What's that one thing out of, this, out of that journey so far? I don't know if I've hit that yet. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if I've done it yet. I might not have even done it. Um, I love it. I love it. Yeah. I've, seen, I've seen some things like <laughs> actually about a month ago, I was driving for dollars. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I wasn't driving for dollars. I went to an appointment in Bakersfield and I had seen some things in Bakersfield that I wouldn't do, mm. but, um, but I haven't personally had that project yet. Mm, yeah. wow. And I love that because the reason why we ask that is because we always like to hear other people's individual's journey because we get that question all the time, like, what's something bad or what's something that came up that made you be like, oh, I don't want to do mobile home mm -hmm. investing anymore. And it's like, for us, it's going to be a learning process. It's going to be things mm -hmm. that comes up in the journey. But if your end goal is to go ahead and make some type of profit for your goal of financial freedom, then a lot of the stuff you just have to, you know, as we talked about, find that workaround and utilize that workaround to continue the journey. So mm -hmm. I love that, you know, you say like, hey, I haven't even experienced that yet because that's <laughs> probably going to be a lot of people's, you know, journey. Because a lot of things is like, you know, we don't have to make it bigger than what it is. Yeah. Gosh, one thing I want to tell you, when I asked you that question, I love it how you said, really nothing. I haven't experienced that. And one thing, what I just thought about, you channeled the mama mentality because I'm gonna tell you something. At the beginning, some people, when they, when they, when you first of all, you bought a house with not even seeing the inside of it. Risk. <laughs> that's right. a risk, right? Right. That's a risk, right there. I forgot all about that. Right. That's a risk. So again, mama mentality, right? That's Kobe gonna take a shot. If he don't care if he can't see the basket, they're gonna take that shot. Second. The plumbing, the plumbing, right? Remember, you know, and of course, again, I'll tell somebody, and we talk about the plumbing can be $2,000 or more, right? You, you, you know, you saw the problem. You like said, luckily, the, the, the part took care of that, but that could have been another obstacle. <laughs> that really, like, not really, so <laughs> it's channeling that mindset. I want to bring that out and acknowledge you for that because you channeled a mindset to say, yeah. <laughs> I ain't really face no problems. When some people would hit me like, oh my God, oh no, you know, everything caving in. So I, mm -hmm. I definitely want to give you kudos for that, bro. Yeah, I appreciate it. When we when we encounter problems, you just find a way to figure it out. That's just what you do. Yeah, one step at a time. Yeah. I always tell my kids, <laughs> my kids are like, how, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? <laughs> you know, so uh, yeah, you just figure it out. Nice, nice, nice. So, man, Josh, you have time. We're gonna take a few questions. So, you have yeah, time to think about maybe like I have three. A question for you guys. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. But hey, babe, real quick, I know we're gonna answer a question, but I want to know. We, we kind of talked about a little bit about it, but how did how did the Elite E Course really help you on your journey? Like, what 
what what did it serve for you you know while you were doing this so yeah i like i said i had learned a lot about uh real estate in general even though i hadn't actually had the opportunity to put it into practice i had quite a bit of background knowledge on like how to find motivated sellers even though with mobile homes it's slightly different it's very similar but it's slightly different um the course just helped to lay out the blueprint so i think i'm not like a super amazing person but if you give me a blueprint i'm going i can follow it um so that's what you guys did you laid out the blueprint and then of course the facebook group the Facebook group too, uh, having the opportunity to ask the group and having access to you guys and being able to email questions. I know um, Sharnice could probably say, I asked quite a few questions in the beginning, especially oh, when it came to that daily license. I was, I was stressed. <laughs> <laughs> he was so stressed out, but look, I, I got Look, I got you together, Josh. And look, you was like, okay, I'll just go ahead and finish my deal. And that's what you did. And yeah. that's what it's all about. So, yes, but man, thank you so much for that. And we love just that, you know, our program and just, you know, us together has been a great support system, especially the Facebook group. The Facebook group, you know, it's us in there. But it's also investors across the country. And I mean, I'm in the group like all day, just seeing what you guys are talking about. <laughs> I'm always trying to answer as soon as possible because that's what it's about. Because the end goal is that we want all of you guys to get these mobile home deals. <laughs> so, yeah. yes. Yeah, so we're going to go ahead and take a few questions. Um, I know Byron is typing in a promo right now for those who are interested in the course or if the course has been on your radar, you definitely want to take advantage of our promo that he's going to be typing in right now. Yeah. So behalf of Josh, man, I love Josh's story. Um, we're doing a hundred dollars off tonight, Josh. We don't, y'all need to thank Josh. We're going to do a hundred, a hundred dollars <laughs> off tonight. Um, I hope it's a clickable link. If not, you want to copy and paste. But again, for tonight only, uh, we're going to take $100 off the e-course, and we're going to definitely answer the questions. If you're looking to get the full blueprint, you're looking to learn A to Z, everything you need, whether it's wholesaling, buying and hold, uh, flipping mobile homes, all that good stuff and more, um, we got our lead e-course. Went ahead and dropped that. Take advantage. But we know people waiting on those, those Q&A, so we got some good questions. Uh, let me see where we're going to start at. Because uh, I think some people had some uh, questions for Josh. I think some of these we get, and maybe a little bit lower. Let's see. I have to apologize for my light, by the way. I don't have an overhead light in this room. Oh, you good. Oh, I see you perfect. When you see me reaching over to the side, that's what I'm doing. I'm messing with my lamp. <laughs> Here you go, Josh. James Harris, what's up, Queen? She said, what's your number one marketing strategy? I heard you say bandit signs. Anything else? Uh, yeah, I think bandit signs have been good. Um, Facebook and Craigslist have been great. Um, driving for dollars mm -hmm. is, is huge. The biggest thing, and actually <clears throat> the biggest thing for me was uh, talking to park managers. Mm -hmm. um, so the actual, the park manager that I'm working with right now, uh, after spending some time getting to know her and her getting to know me, um, I, I had the opportunity to say, well, I've done, I've had, um, I've done one deal before. So I went through and I showed her what I had done. And um, then after having, after spending that time, she told me about how, well, there was actually another home that they had just done an eviction on. They had filed for it like pre COVID and it mm -hmm. finally went through. But the owner of the park wasn't sure what they wanted to do with the home, whether they wanted to move it out because it's a 76 and they're, they own multiple parks. So they were trying to decide whether to move one of their other homes into that one or to, or to sell it to somebody. Um, and then so she said, well, I can actually give you the information to the owner if you want to go talk to the owner and see if you can figure out another figure out a, a deal with the owner so that's what she did so i got the link to to the direct owner it was my first time speaking with an owner um nice. gave her an offer which she hasn't yet accepted but i need to follow up um tomorrow 
or very soon, but I need to follow up with her. But it's a possibility that I could get that one for very, for also a very pretty low price as well. Yeah, so talking to the park managers, Bandit Signs, Facebook, Craigslist, that sort of thing. My strategy right there. That, he just gave y'all some gems talking yeah. to that park manager. Like, though, that is the key to any mobile home park. Mm -hmm. You got a relationship with a park manager, right? And again, let's say towards the end of the month, eviction time, right? Things. Hey, let me know. Let me be your go to when you get an empty house on this park because they yep. need help filling those spots. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. Gabe says, what's up, Gabe? He says, how did you find your end buyer? Facebook Marketplace, recent cash buyer data. So uh, my end buyer, I, I was marketing all over the place, Craigslist, Facebook, offer up, let go. At the time, offer up and let go were separated. And I was doing the boost. I was doing the boost on let go. You could pay a little bit of extra money to get mm -hmm. to more people. But my end buyer actually just ended up being somebody that walked through the park because she lived not in the park, but she lived right behind the park. So she knew it was there. And she was looking for a home to purchase for her son because her son and his wife and their twin daughters lived in the home with the grandparents. And she was thinking, I want you to be close, but not like that close. Like you're <laughs> I want you to be somewhere else. So she was walking um, through the park and she saw my sign in the window. Mm -hmm. And so she called me. Yes, I love that, Josh, because that's our number one marketing strategy of us getting actual cash buyers is that for sale sign in the window. Because yeah. somebody, and that's for everybody who's on here, somebody like actually called you about the house, they're serious. Mm -hmm. That means that, hey, they're very interested. They're probably already at the house. So now they're trying to even see if they can even possibly schedule to see the home. They want to know more details. You get a lot more serious buyers of actual individuals who are already driving for dollars. Josh, like you said, your buyer was already just kind of walking through the park and they saw that sign. That means that they're actually seriously looking. Facebook Marketplace is also another good strategy, but if you're looking for those serious cash buyers, it's going to be those who actually call you off the for sale sign. Yeah, I had quite a few calls. <clears throat> Yeah. Quite a few calls, but um, yeah, she was when she called me, and luckily I only lived about six minutes away from um, the home. But when she called me, she wanted to she wanted to get in right there, and it was a weekend. I had time, so right, right. you were able to go right over. Which I mean, yep. that's good customer service too. So man, <laughs> awesome. yes, yeah. All right. So, uh, hey Art, you asked about the Facebook group coupon. Come on, Art, it's only twenty dollars. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Bart gets that coupon. Bar gets that coupon. <laughs> you might need to do. <laughs> I would definitely say take advantage of the course, though. <laughs> oh man, thank you, Josh. Definitely, I would definitely say take advantage of the course because you're. It's only going to benefit you. The amount of money that you're going to invest to get it is you're. It's going to get ran back to you real quick. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, nice. Thank you so much. So I love this question. It's Lexi says, what was the first thing you did after you closed that sale? I balled out. No, I, um, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> what, <laughs> what I did is I took some of it. Like I said, my goal is to pay off debt. So I took some of it to pay off um, a chunk of debt that I had. Um, I took a good portion of it to, um, I told you I'm very heavily involved in stocks. So I, I took a good portion of it to move into my stock portfolio, and then I use the rest to move into my next deal. I love it. Oh, man, reinvesting. Mm -hmm. Yep. Huge, huge. What I love about it, it was joking around, but unfortunately, some people do do that, right? You, you make them <laughs> and they ball out, right? Like, right. I, I got talking about $40,000. I mean, that amount of money, a lot of us have not even seen, you know, that amount of money you and know, in one, one, one lump sum, you know, <laughs> yeah. that's, you know, individual salary. So like you said, a lot of people would kind of ball out because they're not even interested <laughs> in having those available funds. But man, I love it, Josh. You were able to reinvest into your stocks and not only that, but utilize that money for your next deal. Yes. Yeah. Re <laughs> we got reinvested. But this is what I love. Look at AJ. 
saying I paid off my car and all my debt. Oh man, love it. You're on that level. Actually, we did pay off our car though. I did forget about that. We did pay oh. off our car. All, all right, yeah. man, that's awesome. I love yeah, it. Yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> we did. Oh man, yes. Lexi says, "Smart man." And again, that was that was it was super cool. So another question we got from Gabe. We got we'll take about we'll take his last question. Gabe says, "Are you planning on sticking with parks exclusively, or do you have plans on working with mobile homes on land as well?" For right now, at this moment, at this second, parks. But I do, I am interested in uh, homes on land because homes on land, you're going to have more opportunity to to make even more money. Um, so I I do want to learn about it. I haven't yet. Um, I have plans to learn about it. Um, but yeah, so that that's that's where I'm at. So my my current stage is uh, parks very soon from now i'll be looking at land as well oh man that is dope man i love i love again the maturation so josh what can they find you man i see Artie said he wanted he said he wanted to ask some questions about california so what can they find you at on instagram you can find me at the mobile home guys with the s at the end of it um and that's yeah that's and where you find the mobile home guys right the mobile home guys all right, make sure again you guys are on Instagram. You follow Josh. I have a question for you guys though before we get off. Yes, for sure. Do you happen to know anybody that may have recently acquired a park that might need some people to invest in a home or two in their <laughs> park? That's in a better market than mine. <laughs> we we, I, we do um, so so we could definitely chat about it and see some opportunity. um no but yeah we, we working on it though man we got some stuff we got, got one of the things that you know kind of 2020 when the pan when the pandemic hit uh <laughs> you know we went ahead and uh you know we still um, diving in and, and you know just utilizing the relationships and you know 2021 continue to look out but mm -hmm. We do want to make it easier for a lot of investors because we understand that's a challenge. And at the end of the day, we're here to solve problems. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the main, main problems. You guys talk to so many park managers that are like, no, 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 no. But yeah, we're working on solving mm -hmm. the problem to, to make those <laughs> no's, yeses to open up a, you know, and, and get more people out and be able to invest. Yeah, I'm mostly joking, but I just want to congratulate you guys. Just want to congratulate you. Oh, yeah. Thank you so yeah. much. Yep. Thank you so much. Yeah, we're definitely working on it. We're actually going to be traveling next week um, to our mobile home park. So, yeah, we're definitely here. We're going to be sitting down, having some meetings next week, and, <laughs> you know, keeping the people updated, especially our Facebook group. You know, y'all get first dibs before anybody. So there you go. Got, Art. Yeah, we got all the deals, too, on the table right now that we're definitely thinking about, um, including the people and just kind of working out those logistics so it's definitely on the radar yeah yeah, yeah I, love it. I love it i love it man you know that is it is super dope um you know josh for one man um thank you bro thank you again being our first guest um on our interview series um this is something that Sharnice had thought about and i'm just like yeah we we need to do this right because a lot of people get the chance to see us but you know, put in put. I want you to put drop in the comments if you got value from Josh from from what he was talking about, and and, and I hope you got some motive, not only inspiration and motivation, but I hope he kind of lit some fire into your ass to say, hey, I need to take some. Let's go. Let's go. Right. I need to take some. Right. Okay, listen. <laughs> <laughs> no fear zone, okay? We're mobile home elite investors. We don't handle fear fear well. We get a lot of fear questions, and I always tell, I don't, we're not gonna talk about that. So we're only gonna talk about what you are going to do because again, fear is just a thought. It's a thought, it's like a 10-minute thought. You get past it, but then you still have to take the action. Yes, yes. Yeah, I, I appreciate you guys. I appreciate you guys having me and um I hope I hope that I did provide you know a little bit of value for somebody out there, but I know there's also a lot of people that's in that Facebook group that are doing some incredible things. I've seen some like really crazy stuff um, that have been that's been really inspiring. Oh yes, oh, 
Yeah. Man, man, this is, I mean, thank, man, thank y'all. I, I mean, look at you got the only way I wish Facebook, they're not showing us who sang it. Um, but look at this. I mean, massive value. Oh, man, like you got gems, right? AJ, inspiration, bro. Like, you know, and again, things like this. Um, yeah, you got to drop a 100, man. I appreciate you guys so much. Definitely got a lot of value. And the reason why, again, we want to continue to, to show things like this is because here's the reality, right? Me and Shawnee, we can teach it, we can teach it and teach it, but you guys need to see people who are actually taking what they've learned, took action and made massive results. Like the return, like again, the you talked about your ROI, bro. Like that was insane. Insane. It was for me to make 40,000 and my market, it may take me about four deals almost, right? Yeah, <laughs> four deals. Yeah. And you yeah. talked about that. You talked about that. You can get a hundred thousand dollars quicker, even though it's a higher market, but you can get it way faster than us, even in the Midwest. Like Byron just said, it's gonna take us like four, five deals to even see that 40,000. So we're talking about like four or five months, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? When you got it within like man, a month. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, man, again, phenomenal, phenomenal work. Um, I mean, I can't wait to to introduce our other students who've been able to just because we got Josh, your number's crazy, but we got some people that got some insane you really do. numbers. <laughs> you insane really do. Numbers. So man, definitely, man, thank everybody for joining us tonight. This has been so much fun. Thank you again, Josh, for, man, we really appreciate it. This is your time right now. So we appreciate you taking your time to not only join us, but to give value about the California market to everyone that's on here. Yes, absolutely. Yes. absolutely. Awesome, man. And <clears throat> Josh, any, any last uh, advice for anybody that's on here? Uh, I would just say like, like what I've said already, just if you're on the fence, just do it. Stop thinking so much and just do it. Um, if you literally can't afford to go ahead and do it then think about or find ways, um, that you can do it without having a lot of capital, which you're going to learn about if you, um, invest in your education. So you'll learn about like no money down type of deals. Um, there are lots of people in the Facebook group that are, um, that are doing some pretty incredible things without any money at all. So, yeah, it's it's very possible. Let's just do it. Oh, man, I love it. I love it. I love it, man. Man, seriously, man, you're so inspirational, Josh. Keep doing what you're doing. Everybody, thank you all for joining us on this Monday. Oh, man, you guys have been phenomenal. Thank you. Look forward to the next, uh, in the, the next interview in the interview series. And we're looking forward to bringing on rock stars who did phenomenal numbers, who are out here killing it. We want you. We want to pretty much bring the spotlight to you guys, man. Everybody, show show Josh some love in the comments. Again, you know, again, we're so thankful, Josh. Make sure y'all show Josh some love. Uh, whatever you know, whatever those emojis is, fire sign emojis, <laughs> all of that good stuff. You know what I'm saying? But again, thank you, thank you. Any last words, babe? Yeah, you pretty much hit it. <laughs> Awesome, 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 man. Wait, one second. Whoa. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh. We didn't get another testimony on the line. Yes. 30 oh, seconds. Just waiting on the title. I love it. I love it. There you go. That's major. Right. We just talked about no money down strategy. So, man, yeah. give it up for Lexi Lex for that 3500 That's yes. awesome. Yes, and that's phenomenal. Thank y'all so much again for tuning in. I mean, man, when I tell you guys, y'all, y'all engage. I love the engagement. Next time, come back. We're gonna we're gonna definitely market it a little bit more. I'm glad that we were able to get over 50 people on our first YouTube live. Thank yeah. y'all so 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 much. And uh, man, just you know, continue being great, guys. Continue being awesome. And to next time. See ya. Bye. <laughs>